Okay, so um, I just want to say thank you and welcome to you all for um, joining me today for what will probably be around an hour's session. Mark asked me to have a chat with you with regard to how you can attract more homeowners. Um, do you do lettings as well, or is it just homeowners? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, it, was that a yes? You do. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we we do at HQ, uh, and these these guys don't, Chris. So like, um, so the, Panbury office, the Panbury office does lettings, and then the guys can refer into our lettings business. That's how it works. Is it, got, is it worth their while to do that? Not really, no. no. Okay. Should we just keep it at homeowners then? Yeah. Okay, boys and girls. Um, I believe that. When it comes to the UK, I am the second best business generating guru for estate and letting agents, okay? And if you follow what I do, I guarantee you it works. I'm not here to sell you anything because I have nothing to sell you. I'm here to show you what to do. But I bet you a pound to a penny, none of you will do it because you ain't got the fucking balls to do what I'm going to suggest you do. I'm going to be quite blunt with you today. You are going to get rollickings. I didn't say bollocking, I said rollicking. And I'm going to be quite blunt with you because I couldn't give a monkey's whether you do this or not. But I guarantee you it will work if you want more homeowners to use your agency. But as I said, I don't know whether you're going to do it or not. It's not, my, it's not of my concern. But if you want genuinely want more homeowners to use your agency, pin your ears back, take your notes down, and here we go. But I will tell you here and now, if you're looking for a traditional technique to to attract landlords, uh, sorry, homeowners, this is not going to do. This is not. This is not a dummy's guide for estate agents. This isn't a estate agency 101. This isn't the sort of stuff that you're going to learn in a book. This isn't the stuff that Hart or Connells teach you. This is. This is actually going back a hundred years in time, but using today's technology. You see, if you want homeowners to be attracted to you as an agent, you have to be, by definition, attractive. Now, we're not talking about the look stage. We're just talking about being an attraction agent, as, as Tom Panis would say, that, who I consider is you know the world's number one in the uk in in the world now the problem you have is that you are in competition with every other estate agent so brad you are in shaftesbury and there are probably 10 different estate agents in shaftesbury or there's eight or there's 12 and the problem is is that most people do not ask all 10 or 12 or 20 or 30 estate agents out to their property to value their property we all know for a fact that the person that gets chosen to put the house on the market is the agent they instinctively trust who they believe will offer a great customer service more often than not it's the agent that actually they, they like the most and if you've done a good job and you've proved your worth, you'll get yourself a decent fee as well at the same time. But the biggest issue here is being called out to the valuation in the first place. I am a massive fan of the self-employed estate agency model, yet at the same time, I feel it is also a potential weakness because the, the, the vast majority of UK valuers, I know you're over, you've already passed the Rubicon and you've already become a state uh, self-employed estate agents, but there's plenty of people on the other side of the line thinking to themselves, do you know, I really want to become a self-employed agent because I'm going to earn more money. Yet the vast majority of self-employed estate agents, their mindset from leaving corporate estate agency or independent estate agency to, to becoming a self-employed agent, you know, leaving one on a Friday and starting the first on a Monday, um, your mindset doesn't change. And what you will often find is, is that uh, someone who is considered a great valuer it is a person who's great at converting the free valuation into the listing, but have not been necessarily particularly very good at generating their own 
for evaluation in the first place. All of you around this on this screen here will, will have various different levels of um, capabilities and strengths when it comes to generating your business. But at the end of the day, you eat what you kill and your first job is to be called out to the, to the free valuation. And if you're not being called out to the free valuation, it doesn't matter how good you are uh, as a converter if you have nothing to convert. So that's what I want to talk about is how the hell do you get called out for more free valuations on properties when there are 10, 12, 14 estate agents in the town. The state agency wisdom is considered that boards breeds boards. And again, I would ask this question rhetorically. Do you think most people, husband and wife, living in Poundbury or wherever they want to live, Shaftesbury, Weymouth, the location is totally irrelevant. But do you really think that uh, someone is thinking to themselves, do you know, in uh, uh, every single week I'm going to go on to right to move and I'm going to see which estate agents have put what houses on the market and I'm going to then calculate how long each estate agent has put that house onto the market for. So in five years time when my husband's contract is up at Norwich Union or whatever it's called um, at Bournemouth, we will we'll put that our agent on the market with that agent there. Or do you think a woman, uh, a wife says, do you know if my husband walks out to me in three years time, I'm going to pick that agent, that agent and that agent. People don't have those conversations in their head. They're getting on with life. Well, basically what happens is people just want to decide, right, we need to sell the house. And they just call the first three agents that come into that person's head. No wonder boards breeds boards. If, if an agent is just chucking loads of boards out, they're just seeing the name. Some people might call that brand awareness marketing. So a state agency wisdom is considered that if we haven't got enough boards, if we just chuck enough leaflets and do enough adverts in the newspaper and we put leaflets through doors and we put um, leaflets everywhere and messages and adverts everywhere if enough people know about us they'll use us because the perceived wisdom is well I see the board so they must work the question is this who here put your hand up loves their bank I mean love none of you who here put your hand up has swapped current account in the last five years Not pretty, was it? Or was it okay? Was it okay? Yeah. You see, that's the thing. Sw swapping bank accounts is quite easy. The issue is, is that none of us love our bank, but our perception is, is that swapping bank accounts is a pain in the backside. So therefore we don't swap. But if I asked you to name 10 bank, 10 banks, all of you could rattle off 10 each at a drop of a hat. Brand awareness marketing doesn't work. Your perception is all those for sale boards, so people use them. So if I took leaflets through doors and adverts, they'll use me. They don't. The banks spend millions of pounds every single day on TV adverts and other adverts. Yet still at the end of the day, they never still swap bank accounts. Oh, I used to be a bank manager for the Halifax. My claim to fame is I was on the Halifax TV advert with Howard and if you google it you'll find it and we the only people that used to walk through our door that actually said i want a bank account they might as well have had a t-shirt on them that said i've just come out of natwest the bastards have charged me 300 quid in charges and you were the nearest bank i chose the yorkshire bank because they were the nearest bank outside outside uh, I, I got a my first student job and I went down to Marks and Spencer's, got myself a cheese and onion sandwich because that was considered de rigueur back in 1989. And uh, I walked out and I said, right, I need a bank. And, I, and, I, and the nearest bank was the Yorkshire. And that's why I'm with the Yorkshire. And even when I became a branch manager with the Halifax, I still didn't swap my bank account. So if any of you here believe that brand awareness marketing, if enough people know about us, they'll use us, will work, well, you might as well put 20 pound notes in a shredder. You are wasting your time, you're wasting your money and you're wasting your effort. 
The other type of marketing that most estate agents use when trying to attract vendors to them, the first obviously being um, brand, brand awareness marketing. The second type of marketing is what we call competitive advantage marketing. Now, most estate agents do this type of marketing, and the best way to describe it would be a case of, hi, we're an estate agent, and here's an A5 flyer, or a leaflet, or a, an advert in the newspaper, or whatever, with a bullet point telling people how good you are. You know, so we open eight days a week. We've been open since 2 BC. We open 26 hours a day. We have won this award, and we are brilliant, and we are marvelous, and we are superb, and our willies are literally this big. You see, question, have you all been to a party and someone talks about themselves all night? Yes or no? Hands up or, hand, you know, yeah. What do we think to that person who talks about themselves all night? Do we think either good or bad? Let's show some signs, good or bad. Yet that's what we're doing with our marketing. We are talking about ourselves we are telling people how wonderful we are. We're basically telling us, telling people how wonderful our agency is. And I would make the premise this, does actually anyone care that you have got branches around Dorchester and a few other, that you've won this award and you've won that award? Would they actually care whether you sold so many houses? That's just ego. No one likes a bragger. And no one likes someone talking about themselves. Yet you look at most estate agents marketing and it's all we do this and we do that and we do this. You've got to remember that we are in the service industry and our job is to help someone move from one chapter of their life to another. We are not the heroes of this journey. We are the guide. We are the person that takes someone from one chapter to the next but we are not the hero, we are the guide. So, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, talking about yourself and talking about your firm and things like that, that worked, but people have got a lot more savvy with, with advertising. You know, I can guarantee you if, if you know, you, you have programmed yourself to ignore all adverts, you, you're, you can subconsciously know which is a Google advert. You know on Facebook, if it's a Google, if it's a Facebook advert, you don't read, when you're reading the newspaper, you conscious, subconsciously ignore the adverts. Yet, all of you are guilty of, when you put your estate agent's hat on, you're advertising your marketing. Hi, we're mayor estate agents and we do this and we do that and we do this and we do this and our willies are this big and our market shares this and look at the houses we've sold because we're brilliant. You might care, your mum might care, Mark might care, Paul might care, but nobody else cares and I'll prove it to you. If there was a brand new solicitors in, in Poundbury called, I don't know, mm, let's call it Murias, okay and they had self-employed uh, solicitors all around that part of dorchester and 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 dorset and they said that we've got this and we've we 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 do the soliciting for this and we do the and we've got four four six partners and we've got a chap called paul who comes from barnsley who helps us out and we're brilliant and we've won this award and we're brilliant and we're brilliant is that the sort of thing that anyone would actually say oh darling did you see that advert from Moyers the solicitors did you know they have five branches around Dorset and they've sold this many houses this month they don't care people don't care about you they only care about themselves yet all you do is as estate agents is marketing is talk about yourselves no one cares about you people only care about themselves so if you want more valuations you have to be the agent of choice, the brand of choice, not brand awareness, brand choice. If you ask any person on the high street, name me 10 estate agents in Dorchester, most will be able to rattle off seven or eight. Still doesn't mean they're choosing you to be one of the valuations that they call you around. So what you have to do is start forgetting that you are an estate agent and start thinking that you are a human being. You see, all of us, 
it, it's an irrefutable fact that people only do business with people they trust. Does anyone disagree with that statement? Put your finger down or up if you disagree with that statement. You do, good, you agree with it. So if people do business with people they trust, how can we get them to trust us before we've even put the house on the market? Before they've even trusted us to even call out for a free valuation? The funny thing is though, you can actually earn somebody's trust before you actually meet them. And I will prove it to you. Why was Sir David Attenborough has been voted the most trustworthy person in Britain for the last five years in a row? Why? Anyone? Everyone seen his documentaries and right. come across. Yeah, okay, so that's great. So he's, he's doing some documentaries about penguins. How does that make him trustworthy? I think it's about, his, it's about his manner, Chris, I think. He's got that, he, he, he's easy to emphasise with, he's got a, an easy manner, um, non-threatening, and I think people are drawn to him. Hey, my, 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 my mother-in-law is, is, is even softer than him, but she, she ain't been voted the most trustworthy person in Britain. It's, it's deeper than that. Keep going. Is it, is it because he's giving you information that's reliable? which means, and it is value, so you see him as reliable and valuable. Okay, so re reliable is a strange one, but let's look at the word valuable. Valuable to who? Well, valuable to the people who, who watch him, and they find value in what he's doing. They, they see the value okay. in, in what he's, he's going out of his way to provide for us. Put your hand up if there was a brand new series and David Attenborough was talking about it. Who here would actually purposely go out their way to watch it? Put your hand up if you'd watch it. What, a new series? Yep. Who here would put their hand up? Put the hand up if you would go out of your way to watch a David Attenborough new series. John, let me, you put your hand up first. Why would you watch a new David Attenborough series? It's educational. Yep. Um, I'd watch it with my family because okay. it'd be good for them. So it's it's educational. What how what else would you describe it as? Is it boring? No. So what's the opposite of boring? Exciting. Okay. Brad, would you put your hand up? Would you watch it? I'd watch it. Yeah. Why? Uh, I enjoy it from past from watching it in the past. Would you find it interesting or boring? Interesting. Okay. Tom, did you put your hand up? I didn't notice. I don't really watch much TV, so but I've watched a lot of Planet Earth stuff before, so you know it's it's informative stuff. Okay, yeah. so so we've used, we've seen words like educational, informative, interesting. I might chuck in the word intriguing because it is quite intriguing you see what he has done is he has created content that is interesting intriguing educational and that is the magic of of what happens in the human brain that if you are inter as a human being interesting educational and helpful and would you say David Attenborough is selfish or selfless 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 so we could add the word selfless to that so he's interesting educational intriguing and selfless do all of us have friends with those qualities put your thumb up if you do what do we think to those people? Good or bad? Good. You see, something really weird happens in the human brain that anything that we find interesting or intriguing or educational, we like. So we are naturally attracted to that thing or person. And if that person then keeps giving us educational, intriguing information, then 
interesting information, then what happens is we become attracted to that person and A, we start to get to like, then we get to know them and then we trust them. And that's what happens is that as human beings, we get to like, know and trust and people do business with people they trust. That is the natural progression. Okay, like, know and trust. And the way you do it as a human being is, is that you, you give selfless acts that are intriguing educational now and and educate and selfless and education yeah intriguing interesting those sort of words and people will be naturally attracted to you now i'd recognize some people on this on this webinar is there someone here that follows my social media posts regularly put your hand up if you do tom question when was the last time I actually tried to sell you anything. Well, you don't. Apart from Mark and Paul, does anybody actually know how I earn my money? No, I mean, you always say in your, uh, you know, the, the videos you do, you don't charge anyone for, for those at all. So truth be told, no, I don't know how you earn your money. How I earn my money, has absolutely no relationship to the content that I chuck out. Yet if you looked at most estate agents content, it's all me, 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 look at me. The, 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 the reason of them posting is to try and get something, to sell something. Yes, Mark? Chris, why, why do agents in particular act that way then, in your opinion? What, what's wrong with their mindset? I think most people do. Okay. I think most firms do. The purpose of their social media is the, the, I mean, everyone says I don't get social media. All social media is, is just a communication platform on a video, on a, on a computer screen. You know, telephone is audio communication. TV is visual communication, but it's just one way. Social media is, a, is communication on a computer screen. You know, and you, you know, you look at most, you know, if you walked up to someone in this, if you walked up to a friend saying, do you want a free valuation? Do you want a free valuation? Do you want a free valuation? These are the reasons you should use us. Do you want a free valuation? We're brilliant, we're brilliant, we're marvelous. Look how, look how big our willies are. People will, people will become bored of you. But that's what we're doing with social media. You see, if you want people to be, as I said, attracted to you as, as an estate agent. Just think of the feelings that you had with the friend who is selfless, not selfish, who gives and doesn't try to get, who is helpful, educational and intriguing, as opposed to selfish and what can I sell you? And the feelings for that person as a human being go through the roof. of know, like, and trust. And that is what I'm suggesting as estate agents, that instead of trying to go out there and to try and, what can I get? You should go out there and what can I give? No one gives a flying F that you have to put food on your table of your family. No one cares that you have to pay your mortgage. No one gives a flying F that, that Mark has to pay the right move bill. No one has to, no one cares. People only care about themselves. So what I'm suggesting is instead of trying to get, why don't you give? Why do you give such great information that people are attracted to you? So Tom, you've been following me on social media. I'd like to think that the stuff I give out is compelling, interesting, selfless, giving not getting you never see me try and sell you anything in fact those of you that follow me i often get people come to me and say chris i feel like i already know you i go to the to the to the, to the shows and the conferences and people oh chris and they put the arm around me no no, no it's to in their life bless them but 
they feel like they've known me because what's happened is is they've been watching my videos and i've been giving information which is valuable and interesting and educational and they've started to know like and trust me wouldn't it wouldn't it feel brilliant if people the homeowners of weymouth john or the homeowners of shaftesbury brad felt exactly the same about you and and that's what i'm advocating that you do that you become the trusted go-to person the property guru the main man the main woman of your town and the only way that you're going to do that is stop talking about yourself and your firm and your services and start talking about stuff that they're interested in that they will find educational that they will find intriguing that they will find helpful and the best bit is this boys and girls after the weather the property market is the second most interesting subject in the world to the Brits. You are the gatekeepers to the second most interesting topic in the world after the weather to the Brits. You, you, people should be hanging on every single word that you say. You, yet all we do as an industry is talk about ourselves and how big our willies are and our market share and, and standing outside a for sale board set with a sole saying, phew, that didn't take long to sell. You see, Brad, you're in Shaftesbury. And in Shaftesbury, well, no, I'm going to ask you all a rhetorical question. Tonight, there's a, going to be a brand new for sale board on your street that wasn't there this morning. What are most people going to do before they get out of the car? Put your hand up if you think you know the answer. What would not estate agents do? What would most people do? Put your hand up. Okay, uh, we're going to go to Martin because Mark, we, we're bored of hearing from you. What do I think they do? Um, they probably would, um, if they live local, they would go on and see what that's on the market for. Okay. Why would they be doing that? Because they'd be interested in what their place is worth. Would they do the same if the for sale bulb was half a mile down the road? No, um, no, not necessarily, no, because it's not really re relevant to them. So would it be fair to say that people are actually interested in, if you live in Shaftesbury, people are actually in, in Shaftesbury are interested in the value of their Shaftesbury property? Fair house comment. come on the market just down the road from me. A house, an identical house came on the market to mine four doors down two weeks ago straight on right move <laughs> of course you do and everyone else does that so can we all agree that shaftesbury homeowners are interested in the shaftesbury property market and i bet you a pound to a penny john weymouth homeowners are interested in weymouth property market yet i bet you also a pound to a penny are weymouth homeowners interested in shaftesbury and shaftesbury and weymouth no no so you're based in Weymouth. Why don't you become, why don't you talk about the Weymouth property market to Weymouth people? Sounds kind of cutting edge that does, doesn't it? Isn't it interesting that Savills do not have a marketing department and you will never see an advert from Savills that says, hi, we're Savills. We're posh and we've got a nice uh, yellow and red logo and we speak really posh with silver spoons in our mouth. No, they don't. They spend two million pounds a year with a research department writing articles about the town's property markets that their offices are based in. And then the local rags pick it up because they're crying out for content. And there's a two page article about the Shaftesbury property market or whatever the market is and who's written it? Savills. Savills are successful not because they sell posh houses, it's because they attract posh houses with posh fees because they're the most interesting subject to homeowners and they make most money. If there was more money to be made in the middle market, 
Savills would be going for the middle market, but they make more money at the top market. You could just copy them. You could talk about the property market. You know what you're doing. How do you do that? We'll come to that in a second. The second thing is this. Isn't it interesting that over 160 million people each month go to right move? I think last week there were 16 million on one day. Yet only 70,000 house moves on that before COVID to actually take place. So each month, 165 million visits against 70,000 household moves. That's an awful lot of surveyors and estate agents checking out comps. So why does, why is right move almost an entertainment channel? Why do, why do most people's wives and mums and even husbands go on right move every single day to see what's coming on the market? Why? Put your hand up if you've got, got an answer. People always want better. Yeah. Who here has bought a brand new car, be it bought or on lease or through or choosing a company car through an old company car scheme? Who here has done that in the last two or three years? Put your hands up if you have. Okay, then. How long, Tom, did it take you to decide what car to get? I work for Mercedes, to be fair, so they just gave me a nice car. All right, that's different then. Okay, John, I think you put your hand up. So how long from deciding I need to change my car and doing your first piece of homework to you actually making the choice? How long? Week. Okay. Can anyone beat a, beat a week in length of time? Or longer or shorter? Longer. Mark, how long? Uh, probably about six months. Anyone else? Can anyone build six months? Um, my, I have a black Audi A6. The previous one was a black Audi A6. The previous one before that was a black Audi A4. The one before that was a black Audi A6. The chances of it being a black Audi A6 this time is pretty high. Uh, yet, why have I spent the last eight months going around Jag garages, BMW garages? Why? Research. Yeah, okay, so I could do the internet for that. Why? Why? Come on. Why am I wasting my time? What, why, why do you lot take six months to decide what golf clubs to buy or what stereo to buy? Why does my wife jump on a train and go to Nottingham, spend all day going around the shops and come back with one top where I can physically go into Marks and Spencers or actually just go online, click on my size and go, yeah, I'll have that, that, that and that, but my missus will spend days. You enjoy it. Okay, so do I enjoy clothes shopping, yes or no? Do I enjoy the thrill of the chase of choosing what car to buy? Do most people enjoy the thrill of the chase of what house they're going to buy, even though it might be two or three years hence? It's fun. People love it. So, what, you know, so would it be fair to say that, number one, we agreed that homeowners are interested in the value of their own property. And the second thing is, is that they're also interested in the one they want to buy, that even though that might be two, three, four years in advance. Does anybody disagree with those two main core tenants? Yes or no? Do you agree? Yeah? Yet all we do is talk about ourselves and our firm and our services and how brilliant we are and how big our willies are and our market share. Guys, if you want people to be attracted to you, you just have to be attractive. And you talk about two things. Number one, what's happening in the local property market. Number two, where's the next one I want to buy? Sounds sensible. Guarantee you it works. No, you got the balls to do it. I'm still what's going to do it. Yeah. What's number two? The next one they want to buy. Number one, how much is my house worth? Number two, where's the next one I want to buy? Roll the clock back 20 years. So now if we agree that those are the two things that every single homeowner is interested in, 
if we talk about those things to the local homeowners, they'll be attracted to us. Simple fact. So, what we are suggesting, no, 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 let me, let me go in a different direction. To get your message out to all the people in Shaftesbury, Brad, 20 years ago, the only way that you could do that was if you did two things and both cost an awful lot of money. One is print 20,000 leaflets out and put them through 20,000 doors or spend an awful lot of money on the local newspaper adverts. The barrier to entry to getting your message to the people of your locality, because if you think about it, 100% of Shaftesbury homeowners live in Shaftesbury. I know that's groundbreaking, but true. And 100% of your Shaftesbury homeowners live, obviously live in Shaftesbury, so 100% of your potential customers live in Shaftesbury. Okay, they might be the odd holiday home person, but the vast majority are owner occupiers. Oh, if you want landlords, the vast majority of landlords, 50 to 60% of landlords do live in the locality because people buy what they know. Might be slightly different in Weymouth because you're on the coast, but away from that, it will, local people tend to buy local properties. It's always the case because people buy what they know. Today, you can get a message to all the people in Shaftesbury for free by using this. Because you have a such thing as social media. There will be a Facebook group called Living in Shaftesbury. I love Shaftesbury, Shaftesbury for me, whatever it's called. It's probably got six, 7,000 people in it. I'd probably hazard a guess that the vast majority of them came from Shaftesbury, because I ain't joining that. You know, Brad, are you join, joining I Love Weymouth? Bet you're not. Definitely not going to I Love Weymouth. No, because shit place, isn't it? Sorry, mate. Right. <laughs> so the barrier to entry is zero. So, you know, it's the message you put across. Think about it as, as you know, prop tech firms. The barrier 20 years ago, if you wanted to get a message to every single estate agent, you had to spend thousands of pounds putting adverts in the negotiator magazine. Now, if you're a prop tech supplier, all you have to do is join one of the estate agency Facebook groups with thousands of estate agency and hey presto, you'll get your message in front of them straight away. But who here has seen us you know join one of the Facebook groups of estate agents and the, and that basically all it is 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 a you know a, a hi, we have this prop tech solution, it'll make your life better, buy it, it's brilliant, it's fucking brilliant, get it bought, buy it now, buy it now, buy it now, sell it, buy, buy, buy. You know, excuse my, you know, I'm sorry to be blunt. No, I'm not actually sorry, it's just the way I am, it's my truth. Um, you, what am I trying to say? You, you switch off from those adverts, don't you, as a human being, you ignore them. In fact, Quite often, the admins will take them down and ban the person from the advert. So the variable to success is the content of the, the message. And if it's selfish and get trying to get something, it won't even see the light of day. So if somebody says, I've been trying to put stuff onto the local Facebook group, well, it will be if you're trying to get something, because you're trying to sell something. But if you actually went with the act of giving, hey, giving being selfless, not selfish, people might actually want to watch it or read it or listen to it. You give us an example of what sort of content, which is probably what you're about to come on to. Yeah, it is about what the content says. Stop pissing on my fucking work, Mark. Good on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. The reason I've laboured the point is this, is that in the past, all I've said is do these videos and no one ever does them because they don't get the reason why. I can tell you what to do and how to do it. But if you don't know the reason why, you won't do it. That's the, that's the premise of all actions in life. And if you think 50 minutes that you've wasted your time by doing that, well, then that's 50 minutes that you've wasted, then log off now. But, but if I haven't told you the reason why you should do it, then you won't do it. But if you know why you should do it and you do it, you will win. 
I guarantee you, you will win. So, if we agree that homeowners are interested in the value of their own property and they're interested in the next one, this is what we should be doing. Okay, so, I'm going to go share screen so you can have a look. There we go. Quick, um, out of curiosity, is there a particular barrier that you, you feel that stops people doing it? You know, what, what is it that they need to overcome to do it? Do they, because obviously providing the why helps, but then what would be the most likely reason that the people in this Zoom call still won't do it, in your opinion? Well, we haven't got to that point yet, so we're about to do it. There's only three ways that you can communicate with a human being, written word, audio, and visual. Social media is a combination of all three. Written word, which is type where, you know, and that includes pictures. The other one is audio, which is podcasts or telephones. And the final one is visual, which is face-to-face, -face, television, or video. This is visual communication. It's two-way communication. TV and video is visual communication, but one way. Doing a, a Zoom call like this is one-to-one -one or one-to-six. Doing video is one-to-many. But as long as you're intense there. Now, the question is this. A lot of... The, the most powerful method on all three, because we are human being, is, well, what do you think? Is it written word, audio, or visual? Who has that a guess, anyone? Visual. Wait, well, it's visual. Hmm. Visual. Isn't it interesting that we feel like we know Sir David Attenborough, even though we've never met him? Yeah. What happens is the subconscious cannot distinguish between meeting someone face to face and, meet, and seeing someone on the screen. That's why people feel like they know me, even though they've never met me. And that's, what, that's why celebrities are so well thought of in this world. None of us have met them. We have not tested their trustworthiness, but we still trust them. That's why Kelly Jenner, or whatever her name is, has, has been able to sell a makeup firm for a billion pounds. It's still bloody makeup. But it's got her name on it. And young girls say shit, I want some of that. And it's the same. And therefore, the power of video is something that's absolutely, it will cut through everything. The issue is, is that if I actually asked you to all do a video today, most of you will come up with some BS and not do it. Has anyone here published more than 10 videos? Five. Would it, fair to, would it be fair to say, John, that your first one was the hardest to publish? Without doubt, it's the nerves of doing it and not wanting to look silly. So what, what feelings were going through your head when you were doing your first one? Feelings of silliness, looking silly, what else? Yeah, how I sound. Okay. How I look. Okay, so you're a West Country bloke with a receding hairline with grey hair. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, a, I'm a fat bloke that looks like, looks like overweight Wolverine with a Lincolnshire accent. Yeah, it's, I guess it was more about what your friends thought about it as well. Okay. Get some Mickey taking, perhaps. Okay, so you seem to be the sort of guy that can take, take a bit of uh, bants from the mates. Yeah. Really, you're... Was it really your friends that you were worried about? No, I guess not. Were you worried about that, that troll that was potentially going to put a comment on it? I hadn't thought about that, to be honest. Okay. Who else put some videos out? I think you said Tom, didn't you? Uh, yeah. How did you feel when you put your first one out? Took me a few attempts, um, okay. but got comfortable after a while of doing it. But the first one, like John said, it's the, the hardest one. Okay, so how many videos have you done published in all? I have to check my Instagram, but probably about between five to ten, more towards ten and five. And and over what period? 
Uh, I got quite good at it before I was furloughed, and since I've been back, we I haven't picked up on it. Okay, so you got quite good on ten. Consistent. Okay. Anyone else put some videos out as an agent? Mark? Done a few as an agent. Okay, what would you say to someone who basically was overweight at Christmas and said, I'm going down to the gym and went twice in January and then life got in the way and oh, I'll go do it next week, I'll do it tomorrow and then that turned into February and oh, I'll go at the end of the month and we'll somewhere in July. What would you say to that person who didn't go down the gym? Yeah, could do better, Chris, I think. You see, for the set, who here has done a best man speech? We, who here was bricking themselves? Keep your hand up if you were bricking yourself before. Would it be fair to say, would it be fair to say, John, put your hands down, that the, the, the fears that you had about doing your first list of your first video was very similar to the fears that you had about doing your first best man speech? Yeah, very similar. Okay, let me put your mind at rest, boys and girls, that the fear that you have of doing a video is a biological fear and nothing to be ashamed of. Absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. You see, if you, at the top of your spinal cord, there's something called the amygdala and it's designed to keep you alive. It knows if you've got a pet, your pet has an amygdala and it's at the same level as yours. And its job is to keep you alive. Not go near, it knows not to, near to go to go saber tooth tigers. Don't go near black and white animals. Don't go in dark places. And also on most people, on most animals, Pack animals or solitary? Pack or solitary? Pack. Pack. Why? Because they you're safer in a pack. Okay, so the main, the tenants of, of most of, of living is warmth, food and shelter, okay? So if you come together, the warmth, you, warmth, food and shelter goes up, okay? So in a tribe, is everyone equal? No, they're not. What do you need? Um, you need you know, yeah, chief hunter gatherers, or okay. yeah, all the people that are doing this. What do you need at the top? Leader. Okay. Is everyone equal underneath the leader? Not necessarily. No. no. There's a hierarchy. There is a pecking order. It comes from chickens because they have pecking orders. Okay. What happens if you piss off the tribe leader? What will happen to your position in the pecking order? It goes down. Okay, if it goes down and you continue, continue to piss off the tribe leader, what will happen then? Well, you get ejected. Ejected? Yeah, they told to leave. Okay, what happens when you get ejected from the tribe when it comes to your food, warmth and shelter? You're on your own, kid. And if you're on your own, what happens to the, your food, warmth and shelter? It's very diminished and you, your resources are very, very minimal. Eventually you will die. Your amygdala, the thing that's bricking your shits when it comes to your best man speech, the same reason that you were bricking your pants when you were first time you were about to go on a bike without stabilizers. The first time we can all remember the first time when we were shitting our pants asking that first person out on a date. We didn't want to look silly, daft, or stupid. Your amygdala doesn't know it's a best man speech, it doesn't know that it's a um, oh, the missus come with a cup of tea. Cheers, babs. There you go. Just giving them all the bollocking. It's a nice one. It's coming from a place of love. Yeah, your amygdala doesn't know it's it's a video or best man speech or or on stage. All it knows is it's danger, and if we fuck this up we could get kicked out of the tribe and we'll die. It really is as blunt as that. Has anyone heard of the phrase stage fright? That's your amygdala shutting you down. If I was to judge you boys and girls on your, on your valuing capability based on your first ever valuation, but I was to, would that be a fair reflection of your valuing capability today? I was to base your current, your, your, 
valuing capabilities today based purely on your first valuation is that a fair thing yes or no but you are going to be looking at your video and you're going to say well it's not as good as that guy who's been doing it for two years and um, mine shit so I'll best not start or you're going to think I won't post it out because people my mates will pull my leg. Well, if you can't, let's say, you gotta have a bit of bants, that's what it's all about. And are you really going to elect someone who you've never met, Jane 27, who makes a derogatory comment to affect your life? Because I'll tell you here and now, those estate agents, now this is fascinating. I've got an estate agent in Leicester who has two offices, okay? Bit of a partnership. He runs one, his business partner works the other, okay? He, at his office, they've been throwing the same marketing, but he's been doing video. His turnover in three years has gone from £800,000 to about £1.3 million. The other one's staying stagnant. This is the amount of difference we're talking. The power of video will attract, as long as the intention is correct and, and you're going with the act of giving, giving compelling, interesting, intriguing information, people will be attracted to you. It's a simple fact. So the question is, what, what are you going to do that's going to attract people to you? So now, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to look, show you my YouTube channel. I have done hours and hours and hours of how-to guides. I am not going to waste my time with you lot, because I know you lot aren't going to do it anyway. One of you might, and please me. Well, you haven't got to please me, you haven't got to do me. But one of you might, so I'm going to show you where to do it so I'm not wasting my time. And one of you will watch it, and one of you will do it, and one of you will be so much more successful and earn a lot more money. But if you don't want that, just switch off now and go home. So here we go. Let's have a look. So share screen. So I'm going to go to YouTube. So you're going to go to my channel. Okay. And you click on the word playlists. And just here it says how to use video in letting in the state agency. Chris, we can't see it actually. I can't. Um, I've got a black screen in front of me. Hold on. I can see it. Should be able to see that, everyone. So there's an advert coming up, but okay, look. I don't know if you can see down the side here, it says part one, part two, part three. Can you see that, everyone? Yeah. There's 34 videos here. The kit you need to buy. How to stop yourself looking in the lens. And here's the first type of video that you could do. How to create local property market reports for your, lo for your locality. So I'm just going to click on this now. And I'm going to, now this video here, so we'll just have to let this one roll. Hi, it's Chris. So I actually spend 20 minutes with screen dumps showing you how to build this local property market report. The local property market report is using data from Rightmove, publicly available data. What we're going to do is I'm going to, instead of watching all this because we haven't got time, I'm going to cut straight to the actual video, okay? From Pan and James Estate Agents and I'm here to give you a market update on the village of Uffington. Um, over the last year, six properties have sold in the village at an average price of 387900 and of those, four were detached. Uh, compare that to the local town of Stamford, where it was 347, Ryle, another village not too far away, 216000 but Barnet, which is on the doorstep and thought of as a more of a premium village, unsurprisingly, 442400 there. So let's look at a recent sale. This is the lovely Chartres house, which sold uh, just before Christmas for 644,000. Uh, here's a picture of the kitchen, the lounge, and the beautiful garden. 
So why do we love Uffington? Uffington is a really popular village. You've got Stanford on the doorstep. You've got the pub, which has been completely renovated and done up and have new owners in the last one to two years and has now got a fantastic reputation. You've got the cricket club just down the road that's been uh, there for some considerable time. So all in all, it ticks all the boxes, what you're looking for in the village in Stanford and Rutland. Okay, so what you pen and paper time, if you watch those two training videos, they teach you exactly how to get all of those stats. You're going to say, well, how can I remember the numbers? It's basic. if you watch the training video, you get a piece of A4 paper and a Sharpie pen and a bit of sellotape and you write them down and you stick them on your 30 quid tripod. Because your mobile phone's not on a selfie stick, it's on your tripod. You can't remember all those numbers, so write the numbers down on a piece of paper. If you actually watch the video, you will naturally notice that he actually moves his hands like this. This is a deliberate technique, so when you're reading numbers, your eyes go and see the hands, not the eyes, moving, reading. He did it in a classic one, two, three step method. He didn't introduce himself at the start. He said, if you live in Uffington, have I got something interesting for you? Then he went through the facts and figures and then he hit them with the I love Uffington because. And at the end, he, he basically introduced himself at the end. And what you must do is you must, you must um, join the Facebook groups of all of the villages and towns that you are based on, but not as a company, but you as a person. Because they're more likely to allow posts from a person than they are from mayors in Dorchester. And then what you should be doing is if there are 10 villages around Weymouth, you, you, you do 10 videos, or you do 11, one on Weymouth and 10 on the villages around, and you do 11 videos a month but what you don't this is important you don't upload them onto your own facebook feed and share them into the group you physically upload village a's video into village a's facebook group you don't share you physically upload then in village b you do the village b's facebook video and you upload it into the village b's facebook group And by doing that on a regular basis, once a month, people will start to look forward to you doing these things. And isn't it interesting, there's a guy that's been doing this and he puts them out on the first of the month and someone actually, um, a couple of months ago, this is before COVID, rang him up and said, you normally post a video out on the first of every month. It's the third, why haven't you posted it? The next type of videos. Notice here we're not doing anything that we're selling here. The top 30 streets in your town. There is a full training video on this. So let's get this. You know you're good at what you do, so how come no one's buying? In this video, I'm going to share with you the three secret methods. So I've got a training video here. Hold on, skip past. There we go. So, intro, intro, what we're doing, the yep, purpose of it, where we are today. The microphone, position yourself. Here we go. The street has 53 residential homes on it. The average sale price currently stands at around £188,750. And within the past 12 months, there's been 12 property sales. Since 1995, there's been 41 property sales. 
Now, typically along this street, there is a mixture of housing. Just behind me, we've got the Victorian terraced homes. But as we move further up the street, we have got from the 1940s, 1950s and 60s, uh, semi-detached homes. Um, let's have a look at one of the most recent sales that's happened on Spencer Street, and that's number 12 that completed in June of 2018, and that sold for £170,000. So at this point, the photograph of the, the photograph of the property will be filling up the screen. I haven't shown, I've, but basically that's how you do it, just like you're doing the other one. If you want to know what kit to guy, then, um, then I'm going to show you a, a kit list. So, you're doing top 30 streets, so you could almost, in Weymouth, you could do the top 30 poshest streets, and you could do the top 30 most affordable streets. There's 60 videos, there's one a week for the next month. Okay. And then you could also do local property market reports once a month in all the villages. But the next bit is, the next bit is totally going to screw your head up, all right? I want you to stand outside a competitor's house and tell people to buy it. Totally screwing your head up. Here's a training video. Hold on. Do apologise because it's trying to download video and also push stuff up to you guys. If you are a letting agent and you want to attract more landlords, one of the very best things you can actually do is highlight great buy-to-let deals that have come on the market with a competitor. Go to your uh, to the property itself, get your mobile phone out with your tripod, your little adapter, make sure you have your microphone with your fluffy thing in. I'll put a link in the videos to all the bits of kit I recommend. And you do the classic one, two, three and a half method of telling people why it's simply the very best buy to deal in the world and trust me i know it's a competitor's property but landlords will love you for it so how do you do the video so what we do is we set ourselves up that we're going to be talking about this first floor apartment above this chinese restaurant which has just come on the market i'm going to set myself up notice that i'm just off i'm over the center just off to the side and I'm not looking at myself on the camera, I'm looking at myself uh, in, in the lens, which is always near the eyepiece, always trying not not look at yourself in the mirror. I'm going to use the classic one, two, three and a half method. Number one, the intro. Number two, the facts and figures. Number three, I love it because of number three and a half, the outro. Okay? It's really important that in the facts and figures that you don't use any descriptive words. No, lovely is marvellous is just pure fact. By keeping the fact away from the emotion, people won't feel like they're being sold to. Also, because it's on the market with a competitor agent, it's really important that you mention the name of the agent, and we can mention that in the facts and figures stage, and we can also mention it in the uh, section three, which is I love it because uh, section. So, what we're going to do is this. I am going to go straight for this video. You don't have to put any internal photographs in, but as I'm talking through, you'll, I'm going to move my fingers across to show you which section we are in. So remember, section one is the intro where I'm not going to introduce myself, I'm going to mention myself at the end. That's really important. Don't waste any time introducing yourself. Number two, you are going to give them the facts and figures of the rental property and who it's on the market with. Three, you are going to tell people why you think it's the best buy for that deal. And three and a half, you're going to do an outro, uh, introducing yourself and looking and making landlords make one talk to you. Okay, so here we go. So. Hi, if you are a Grantham buy-to-let landlord and you're looking for a cracking buy-to-let deal, have I got something for you. This one-bedroom apartment, which has just come onto the market with my competitors, Connells, has come on the market for $59,950. It offers one large bedroom, a dining room, a kitchen, and a bathroom, gas central heating, and double glazing. I think this will make an absolutely fantastic buy-to-let deal because the rent is uh, £450 a month, which means your yield will be 7.2%. Uh, it will let to a cow's come home. It's really, really nice inside, and when you come to sell it, you've got to sell it really, really quickly. 
my name is Chris Watkin from Chris Watkin Estate Agents and if you need any more information about this property give uh, give Connells a call they, they'll do all the viewings that you're not you're not buying it through me give them a call but if you really want to know why I think this is a cracking cracking deal you can always give me a call um, I'll come back to you next week with the next best buy to let deal in the world uh, in Grantham uh, so you can make the best buying decisions my name is Chris Watkin thanks very much and, and there you go that's it okay I went a bit back to the lyrical on the end but remember this so that particular video there is you standing outside a competitor's house and telling landlords to buy it. So if you were trying to attract landlords, that is what you would do. But this will totally screw your head up. If you're only looking to attract homeowners once a week, I want you to go on to right move and pick the best house that's come onto the market with your competitor. I want you to go and stand outside and I want you to copy word for word that process of the one, two, three and a half. And you're going to say, Chris, you are asking me to stand outside a competitor's house and try and sell it try and sell it you're asking me to help another estate agent and i'm going to lose the fee but i would turn around to you and say how can you lose something you never had mark Chris? Yeah. yeah um mcgrath um agrees with exactly what you're saying over in australia so they said if a competitor's got a property, you want to get rid of it off the market as quickly as you can. So actually you're only helping yourself if that board gets sold and down quickly. So there's a very good reason why you want to get rid of that board. And so it's actually a win-win situation. Um, it's a win-win-win because you make yourself look awesome. Yeah, yeah. And selfless and intriguing. You know, what's this about? But also, here's a question for you. Um, not that long ago, a property uh, came on the market, which I knew very well another agent there was about 20 grand beneath what i thought it should be put on for and um you know you get this burning desire to phone up the owner and go what are you doing you know you've undervalued it um how do you manage you know a situation where glaringly obviously you know we could bang 20 grand on a house without ditching the other agent um what what, what do you think about the etiquette you know because you don't want to look you don't want to come across as potentially negative and undermining or anything do you what would you do there never been asked that question but let's work this one out or even if you think it's heavily overvalued you know well well that's easy is is if you question someone's judgment even though they know their judgment is wrong they will still defend their position because they don't want to look a twat so really at the end of the day i think the important thing is is not to blame the block is is um is to not blame the vendor but all the vendors decision but basically uh, put a question mark in their head we're all ringing up saying your property is 20 grand undervalued and you're expecting oh mark you're brilliant put the house on the market i think the, the magic thing is to put, put a seed of doubt in and let and let the three o'clock in the morning and let and let the three o'clock in the morning uh cold shivers work now this is important is Mark, if you found a hundred pounds, that would be a positive emotion. And if you lost a hundred pounds, it would be a negative emotion. But okay, so we can agree on that one. But which one would, would, would have a greater emotion? Finding a hundred pounds or losing a hundred pounds? Losing. And therefore the art the art with that would be to actually say, is not do you want me to get twenty thousand pounds more? Is is I'm quite intrigued that that's the price you're on at. Obviously, the agents know what they're talking about, but are you aware you could be losing twenty thousand pounds? But what if you did, um, Chris? Uh, absolutely agree, because uh, always the fear of loss is heavier than the, the appreciation of gain. I know that. I mean, did um, you go back to the property in the first place? Uh, no, they no, they didn't ask us out um, on it, which is annoying. <laughs> so okay, but, but that, okay, but if they know you, it's the funny thing is, is how rare is it that someone who doesn't know you doesn't call you out and still undervalues? So we're almost going down a rabbit hole on this one. Um, all I'm thinking is, like, um, is it safe to stand outside a house and go, oh, look, you know, I've just come outside 33, the high street, 
and uh, I can see this three bed um, uh, townhouse on the market, at, you know, 285. And I think it's an excellent value property that you should quickly buy. Um, it looks a bit cheap, you know, you, you know, where, where do you go with the knife? Do you go? But how, you, uh, how often is that going to happen? Well, actually, I think in John's area, particularly, he's got an agent that's got a, quite a strong reputation and they, then people just go, oh, that's the agent. They've got boards absolutely everywhere. And me and John both know that their weakness is quite strong undervaluing. So, so John, as they just go in, they just go and put them on smash sell, put them on smash sell. Um, right. And that's okay. But John's uh, way in really is to show. Right. right. So, there, so therefore, so therefore, if John was going to do that, you almost got to say this, is do a video. And, and over at the place, say, bloody hell, this is an absolute cracking buy because tell you what, normally they sell for 20 grand more than this. So obviously the agent is absolutely, the homeowner is desperate to sell it because it's an absolute bargain. And sell it as a bargain. Do the video, upload it to YouTube, and then the very next day, put a card through the letterbox saying, come to the Dorchester or Weymouth property blog because your property's on it. Do you do you believe in creating those property blogs, Chris, for everybody? Because uh, I know that me and Brad have been working on the Shaftesbury property blog, blog that you recommended, and he's had a really good, you've had a good start, Brad, haven't you? But he didn't really publicise the blog, but I think it got you moving in the "I do it for the town" mentality, maybe, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I've you talk about giving something rather than trying to get something. I, I tend to, admittedly. I need to be better at the blog. I tend to do a lot of how posts in the post local. Sorry. How often are you posting? Well, each blog. Yeah, on the on the Chelsea property blog. Once a month. It's not good enough. Mm. Simply not good enough. It's once a day. What mate. do you think? Once a week. Once a once day. A day. I, I just can't help but think people are getting would get fed up with that. Hold on. On Sky, there are 700 TV channels that are on 24-7. You choose not to watch. Well, people can't choose not to watch, but basically, if you want to be the centre of attention, I'm not getting at the person. I'm not getting at you as a person, Brad. But we've all been to blogs where there's one post a month. Your job is to, you know, if you see, I took out a video a day and two, three posts a day. If you watch Gary Vaynerchuk, he says you should be putting 60 out a day. You are, a, you are not estate agents anymore who do marketing. You are marketeers who sell houses. I'm going to leave you with this very, very one thought, okay? Let me share the screen again. Hold on. If you see here, it says, can you see it says digital mayor? Okay. Can you see that? That's in that link I showed you. So we'll just go back to the link so you can see. Well, you've got the link. It was the, low, it was the how to use video in a state agency. Write these numbers down. Because this will really mess your head up. There is an estate agent in Lincolnshire in a town with a population of 17 and a half thousand estate agents. And every Friday for the last two years, they have done a 25 minute Facebook live video from their offices at six o'clock on a Friday night. Between me and you, it's actually recorded on a Thursday uh, because you can actually pump pre-recorded stuff out on Facebook Live if you have the software. The show itself could be best described as the one show in an estate agent's office. It is the most awful piece of TV you've ever seen in your life. It has. They, the first seven or eight minutes, they talk about the property market. Then they go a pre-recorded bit, just like the one show, and they go to Betty's Coffee Shop and they stand outside Betty's Coffee Shop and say, one of the reasons you'd move to, to our town is Betty's Coffee Shop. And, he, and, and I'm going to go inside now and find out from Betty why the people of, of 
our town love her so much. You then take the mobile phone, because it's all mobile phones. This is, this is a mobile phone and a 30 quid tripod and a 50 quid up microphone. You don't need anything, gimbals or any that, or fancy cameras. And then he says, what do you like about the, our town? What do you like about our people? What do people buy from your, from your coffee shop that they used to 30 years ago? And then you, you spend a minute or so talking to her and you turn back to the camera and say, this is one of the reasons you'd move to our town. They then take it back to the, to the studio where they go on to right move. Take, they look at all the listings in the last, last seven days and then they just pick favorite ones and say, oh, my missus would like that one. And it really is that bad. They then go and do Bob the Butcher and the same, why do you love the area, why do you love the people? They then come back and then go to right move and look at the ha sold house prices, the completed sections. And then they do two minutes of, they do two minutes of um, parish notices. It's the most appalling thing in the world. It, is, it looks like it's so amateurish, it's awful. Yet, for the first six months, they spent 20, 30 quid a week on boosting it. For the last 18 months, they have not spent a penny. All right? Write these numbers down. On a bad week, two and a half thousand views with an average view time of 18 minutes. On a good week, three and a half thousand views. 15 to 20 percent of the population of their town without being prompted, marketed to, prodded, or an advert being thrown and saying, there's an advert coming up, just like it's 7.30 or it's EastEnders, I'll go and watch it. People say six o'clock on a Friday, we'll go and watch the Bourne Property Show. Isn't it amazing that after two years, he's the number one estate agent, beat him off with shitty sticks and can't even go for a sandwich because people stop him in the street. That, I think the key here, Chris, is what you're telling us, there's lots, lots of cheap ways to make a massive impact and which don't cost massive amounts of money. It doesn't cost anything. It costs time. But none of yeah. you got, none of you have got the balls to do the videos and none of you have got the patience to, to actually, when you do start it, realise just like the person at the gym, that it takes six months to actually see any to see any results. So the hard part is A starting and the second part is then actually staying through with it until you start seeing the results. It's hard work and patience. And if you haven't got those, then go home. But one of you one of you might doing this i'm only here i couldn't give a shit whether john brad martin or anyone or 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 dave or tom or alex or whatever does all this i'm only here because mark i get on like a house on fire with mark he's a friend of mine i'm here free of charge i could be i should be charging a thousand pounds for this i'm only here because mark is a friend of mine and i like him to bits and he says could you help my lot yeah i'll help you none of you will fucking do it because you either ain't got the balls to start or you haven't got the patience to follow on through. But if you have those things, I guarantee you, in five years' time, you will be beaten off with shitty sticks. Guarantee it. I mean, the one, the one thing all these people want in front of us, Chris, is a load of money, don't they, yeah? And th this is the easiest way to serve their com com community and make good money and gain a great reputation it's the easiest way of any other thing that they could possibly look, do look look, look at look at me i'm a fat bloke from grantham and all i've for the last three years all i've done is interview people from the industry and people think i walk on bloody water my name is put up in lights with with names that i don't even dare three years ago even mentioned or even pick the phone up and now and it's very humbling for some reason people in the industry have put me on that pedestal and it and, and it's a very nice thing it's it's not trust me my wife has not let it go to my head but you could have the same in your town people could look up to you as the property guru and i'm saying to you this think about what you were doing three or four years ago just think now just for a second what were you doing three or four years ago and i bet you a pound to a penny it doesn't seem like two minutes ago but what i'm saying to you is this why don't you for the next two or three years you really put your head down put the hard work in make the foundations build you know if you want to build something you have some foundations you have to put the hard work in all of most of us are wanting are basically just going from short term to short term we can't think beyond our pipe sales pipeline 
what I'm suggesting is, is you say, right, I'm going to be the fucking big, biggest estate agent in my town by a country mile, but it's going to take me five years to do it. And I'm going to create a foundation of something that's wide and deep that, to build off. And I'm going to become the property guru. And it's going to take me time because you, a hard part is starting. The second hard part then is you're doing maximum work and getting nothing in return. The next hurdle that you're going to attract in two and a half, in two years time, is it will go to your head. People will, oh, they'll blow smoke up your ass. And then all of a sudden you'll get big. I've seen it. People get big headed. And then, and uh, oh, there's another stage. You'll get so busy that you won't have enough time to do the videos. So what happens is because the work you do uh, six months ago is, affects you now, is that as you, when you stop, the business doesn't stop. So oh, don't worry about it. But what happens is that it slowly tips over and, and it starts to go down and you start doing the videos and you've got to pump up, um, you know, you've got to, that bit, you know, you've got to, um, that six month gap between doing something today and getting it in return. I've seen that happen so many times. And then, it will go to your head because you know two or three years time but if it was easy everyone would be doing it you made a choice when you became a self-employed estate agent you could you know and it isn't all about the money it's about the esteem the, the the affirmation and whatever you're in it for but if you ain't got the properties to sell and, and you can't earn the money and you can't do whatever you want to do in life so said i'd rather you don't do it because to be honest with you there might be an estate agent in your town that's prepared to make me a shed load of money to help them do it. Because what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I've given you the answers. Everything I have just given you today is not secret. There are videos of this all over the internet of me saying exactly what I've done to you today. What if some scrote from Hart or Connells, John, from Weymouth, actually watches my videos and actually does something about it and actually starts doing local property market reports and starts standing outside competitors houses what would you say to yourself in in two years time saying yeah i wish i had taken out walking because you, you can't copy the guy because you're just oh you're just copying him you're just a a, a a pale imitation you have this opportunity no one's doing it in your town you either take the opportunity or let some other scrope take it off you. Because when you go to your nursing home in your 80s and 90s, people never regret what they did do. They always regret what they didn't do. That's it, Mark. Thank you, Chris. Legendary. Honestly. Gold. Gold I will not apologise for my straight talking, boys and girls. You have a golden opportunity. It's up to you whether you take it. I think it's all those videos are available, are they, for us yep. on YouTube? There's 1,300 videos on my YouTube channel. What's the name of the agent in Lincoln? Uh, Hill and Clark. So if you watch the videos, you'll see examples of it. In, in, uh, in 10 years' time, the business is going to be mostly media. And the reason why I think anyone has to appreciate this type of great talk it is because I don't think anyone's doing it at the moment but in 10 years time everyone will be doing it yep. you haven't got any choice you know you really don't have any choice if you want to be the first guy in but, but you know it's just going to be video video all the time Chris isn't it Facebook it just wants video only really that's where it's headed video with the right but uh, no Chris it's really helpful I really appreciate your time thank you look if anyone Thanks, wants look um if anyone ever wants to give me a call, um, you can't ring me during the day because I have over 100 clients and I'm dealing with those all the time. Yet you can always call me between 7 and 8 o'clock during the week on a weekday. On your bike. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. And you still don't know what I sell, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> um, uh, Is there any other questions? Um, I think that uh, Michelle Gallagher and Luke St. Clair are two good people to copy um, the type of posts they use. Um, do you agree? And do you have anyone else that you feel is, is, is doing? They, they just go and look at them. They're brilliant. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, those two. So, yeah, Mich Michelle Gallagher. What's her company called again? JD Gallagher. JD. Yeah, JD Gallagher. She's 
all the different types of that. And, re and remember, any videos that are of a giving nature, you don't post them on your own personal or company page. You physically upload them into the local groups. Because Brilliant. if you post it onto your own company page, the only people are going to see it are the people that like your page, and that's you and your mum. <laughs> Guys, I wish you well. If you need any help, give me a call. Thank you for your time. I the place I've come. I did this video from a place of love, and a, uh, and a place of gra hopefully humbleness to tell you what you need to do. Only you can decide whether you're going to take this opportunity or not. The choice is yours, really. I love you loads. I'm going to leave you in peace. Thank you for your time. Thank you.